So we are now recording here. And most of the time I'll start out class with the, the webcam so you guys get to see me at least in the recording for a couple of seconds. Access for this class, um, how many of you have, oh, let's do it the, the easy way, how many of you have not used Blackboard before? Show of hands. So there's a couple of you, okay. So you need to get to the WITC website, which is just WITC.edu. And when you go to the main site, it's going to look something like this. Up along the top, on the right side, the last one, for, or second to the last one from the right says email. You'll click, or not email. We want to go to the fourth to the last one, we want Blackboard. Sorry. And it'll take you to this login screen for Blackboard. Your username is your student ID number. If you don't know it, let me know, and I can repeat it for you. Your password is going to be the first two digits of your first name, or first two letters of your first name, the first two letters of your last name, and then the last four digits of your social security number. So I'm Todd Hoff, so it would be T-O for Todd, H-O for Hoff, and then the last four digits of my social security number. Depending on the semester, usually it's all small letters, but some semesters they click the wrong button and it ends up being your first letter of your first name is capitalized and then small and then first letter of your last name is capitalized. So if it doesn't work the first time, try different combinations of capital letters. Once you log into Blackboard, you'll get this screen here. For summer, if you may have other classes, but under your summer list, you will have pre-algebra. I'm going to shut off my spring list just so I get some more space. So when you go into pre-algebra, here's my welcome message. Now, I sent this out yesterday just because I found if I send it out more than a little bit before class, if I send out a few days before class, especially in the summer, nobody really wants to think about their class coming up too far in advance. So I just sent this out yesterday. And if you didn't get it, it, it should have came in your WITC email, but if you didn't get it and haven't read it yet, you're not behind by any means. But this is just a welcome to the class, and what it's saying is where you find all your information on Blackboard. Now, you are not required to use Blackboard. I'm going to say that right up front. It's just extremely helpful if you do. There's a lot of useful stuff up here for you. Um, we'll go over, I'm going to, I'll go through the different spots on Blackboard for you here in just a little bit. One of the biggest things that you will need in one part that is required is access to my math lab. My math lab is a website that goes along with our textbook and that's where all your homework and quizzes will be done. Your daily homework and daily quizzes will be done. With the multiple sites it's just too much shuffling papers to try to fax or scan and email papers back and forth so we let the, the website handle all that. So that's one of the things we're going to go over in a little bit is how do we get you guys logged into my math lab? Okay, so back to things for Blackboard here. So that's the announcements. When you go into Blackboard, that's the first thing you're going to see is those announcements. If you click on course information, this is where most of the really useful stuff will be. Um, here's my information, my contact information. Um, I'm, if I didn't mention it, I'm Todd Hoff. All you guys can call me Todd for the summer. My phone number, in fact, any WITC campus phone number will work. If you dial any WITC campus and then dial in the extension 5361, it will go to my voicemail. Um, don't expect me to ever answer the phone because I spend about three minutes a day in my office. I'm usually in the classroom here. But I do have it set up now so I get an email notification when I get a voicemail, so I should be able to return those pretty quickly. The best way, the most reliable way to get a hold of me is through email. Um, you guys can see I have a computer right here at the workstation, so I check my email at least a couple times a day. Um, the one limitation I have started putting on the last few summers and the last few years 
is I don't check my email on weekends just because I found I spend the whole weekend answering questions and then I come in on Monday morning and I'm still wound up and um, so at the in, for the sake of avoiding burnout I've, I've stopped checking email on weekends in the summer that includes Fridays because I don't have Friday classes our classes are done on Thursday so if you have a question on a Friday morning you might not get an answer till Monday morning um, and I apologize for that but don't worry if you have something that comes up even late Thursday night or early Friday morning and you send me an email and I don't get back to you, come Monday I'll make it right. If I have to extend a homework assignment for you or something like that so you can get your question answered and get it done, don't worry about that. We'll make it right. It's, it's just a matter of maintaining everybody's sanity of taking the weekend off and relaxing. My office hours. We'll discuss this a little bit. Um, for the sake of those of you that are on the, the far sites, in the summer I try to do my office hour about a half hour. I start about a half hour before class, and then I'll go, usually I just round it off 20 minutes after class, I'll go till noon. Um, that's more hours than what I'm supposed to put in for office hours, but I find it's just easiest. What I'll do is after class today, I'll go down and tell them to start the network at 8.30 or 8.40, so that connection comes up so those of you at the far sites can can talk to me before class. And then I'll have them extend it so the network doesn't go down until either 11.50 or noon, somewhere in there, so there's time. There will be time usually, I'm not going to lecture for two hours and 40 minutes. Um, this class is designed that for every three hours of lecture there is supposed to be an hour of built-in work time. That doesn't mean that I'm going to let you out, you know, half an hour early to, to do homework every day. Um, a lot of times that work time takes the form of I'll give you an example problem, give you a couple minutes to work on it, then we'll go over it. So it may not necessarily mean that you'll be able to go off and log onto the computer and start your homework, but it'll be time where I'm not just sitting here talking at you, you're actually trying some problems and stuff like that. But there will be days where if you guys are catching on to it and I don't feel that we need to do too many more of those problems, that I will let you out of, you know, maybe as early as 11, 20 or, or so, let you go to log on to the computer and start on your homework and get that done. Also on this page is the syllabus. We'll go through that quickly. So there's my contact information again. Um, I've, I've stopped printing off the syllabus and handing it out just because Usually by the time students need it later in the semester, they don't know where it is anymore anyway. Or I actually found a lot of them in the garbage can on the way out the door the first day, to be honest. So uh, the save paper, I just have it posted here online for you, so you always know where to find it. Again, that's my contact information. My office is in the instructor office area, but like I said, I will be in this classroom if you need me. You guys are here, so I don't need to tell you when and where class is. What this course is, um, most of you are taking this course because you are required to take it to get into your next class. So this is kind of set up as a review of math to prepare you for a few different possible classes that you could be taking next. Whether that is a tech math class, if you're going into architectural design or industrial maintenance or any of those programs, or a business math class if you're going into any of our business programs, or even um, college algebra, or a intro to college math, or any of those. Um, math and logic, I guess, would be a new one now if you're going into any of our computer-based programs. So we, we follow, we're going to cover a lot of general math topics. We're not, this is one of the few classes I teach that is not aimed at a specific program. So I will try to mix in applications from some different programs into the course. Um, usually it's very heavy in the business areas because that seems to be the, the one area that's most highly represented in this program. Um, some medical applications for any of you that might be going on into the nursing program and stuff like that. But with that said, there will be some topics in here that don't necessarily apply into your next class but we have to hit all of them at once. And also, for many of you, um, you may not think it now, but 
at some point after you get a two-year degree, uh, many of you may at some point consider going on for that four-year degree, that bachelor's degree, and all the information in this course, I guarantee you, will be, be present in your math courses for a bachelor's degree if you take that route. Okay, then. So, the textbook. The textbook for this class is titled Pre-Algebra. It is by Pearson. It is this aqua green thing that hopefully all of you have. Is there anybody that does not have their textbook yet? Okay, that's good. Um, this textbook also should be in the front, inside front cover or back cover, one of the two. Should be a card that has your code for access to my math lab as well. And like I said, we'll go over that in just a few minutes. Also, highly recommended for this class is a scientific calculator with fraction function. Um, if you're going to spend the money, get the fraction function. The calculator does wonderful things for helping out with fractions. I saw a couple people cringe when I said that word. That's expected. They're not as scary as they sound, trust me. Hopefully, by the end of the summer, they will be your friends. Now, I have the graphing calculator on my screen here. You do not need a graphing calculator. If you have one from that you've used in high school or, or your kids have used in high school that you have laying around, you're welcome to use it, but you do not have to go out and spend $100 or $120 on a graphing calculator. Um, if you don't have one, the one that I think works best, um, at least works best for me, seems to be the Texas Instruments TI-30 calculator. That one does fractions, does it very, sim very simply and very well. Uh, does everything else you need, and it's about $12 or $13. Spend the extra money and get the solar. It's like an extra buck or two to get solar, just because then you don't have to worry about batteries going dead. I have maybe seven or eight of them up in my office. The batteries are dead, oh, wow. and it's like five or six bucks to replace the batteries. And <laughs> exactly. At that point, just I'll get a new one. Um, if you have any sort of scientific calculator, chances are it's good enough for the class. If you're not sure... Let me know, and I'd be happy to take a look at it. And, yeah, that's, is that a BA, or is that just a... It's a BA two plus. Okay. The one issue you will find with the BA is, one, it doesn't do fractions. Yeah, I, I was kind of looking at this when I bought it for... Yep. It's required for a lot of your finance classes, though. Yeah. Yep. The other thing with the BA calculator is it's set to round to two decimal places, always. So if you need to round to something different, it, it's tough. You can make it do it, but every time I've looked at it, I've got to, it takes me like 15 minutes to figure out how to shut that function off. It's not a... Yeah, it's a little bit to do to get it set up for me. Yep. So you, you may want to look into just grabbing another cheap calculator just for the fraction function. Okay, the competencies for this course. So we're going to look with real numbers. So that's whole numbers, fractions, decimals, and negatives. Now, those of you that cringed at fractions, the one thing that I, that I found that students have the most trouble with in this class is working with negative numbers. So we'll be very careful. We'll actually go over those several times throughout the summer. Simple equations and dealing with algebraic numbers. Um, solving basic equations and writing equations from word problems. And yes, I said word problems. Um, that as the summer goes on, the assignments and the tests will include more and more word problems because, let's face it, life kind of is a word problem. And also, really, the in my opinion, the absolute toughest skill in math is drawing information out of a problem or a situation and then figuring out what to do with it. So that's something we're going to focus on in this class is how do you actually break that information down. We'll spend a lot of time with percents and proportions. I think that's probably the most useful tool in math is a proportion. I mean, you can solve 70 to 80 percent of math problems just by knowing how to, to deal with those relationships in a proportion. And then some basic graphing and statistics to wind up the end of the summer. <coughs> Grading. Um, roughly 80 percent of your grade is on unit tests and quizzes. 
Throughout the summer, there will be four unit tests. There will be quizzes almost every day. There will be a homework assignment every day, obviously. So what generally happens with the quizzes is they lag a day behind the homework. So today we will actually lecture on new material. You'll go home and you'll have a homework assignment that will be due, I think I have them set to be due at noon or something the next day, so it'll be due at noon tomorrow. And then tomorrow there will be a quiz that's based on the same material as today's homework. What that does is it gives you a day to do the homework and learn the material. It gives you a chance to come in tomorrow for class and ask me questions on that homework if you need to, to make sure you're, you're understanding it. And then you go and take a quiz on it. And then you would then proceed on to the new homework from tomorrow's lecture to, to practice the new material. So there will always be those two things every day. Like I said, today there will just be a homework, but most days there will be two things. There will be a quiz on the previous day's material and a homework on the new material that you need to be doing. So 20% of your grade is on homework and participation. Um, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. The main reason people fail this class, and I don't have many that do, but the main reason people fail this class is because it's very easy and accessible with the homework all online, and all my lectures recorded and posted on Blackboard, it's real easy to get into that thing of, well, you know what, I can stay home today. I'll just do my homework on Blackboard. I'll watch the video lecture, and it'll be just like I was in class. And you can get away with that once or twice, but invariably it comes up that there's a question on the material, but since you're watching the recording, you can't ask the question because you're not there to ask it. Or you get a little bit behind and the recording gets posted at like 4 in the afternoon or whenever I get it posted and you don't have time to watch the recording or whatever and then you get behind on the material. So even though it's very easy to access this class outside of the classroom, attendance is very important. Now if, if you have to miss class for something, I am not going to deduct points from your grade for that as long as you let me know that you're not going to be able to make it. But, like I said, of the people that have failed this class, I'd bet three-fourths of them, it was because they started missing classes. So make sure you're, you're here. and it, it doesn't seem like it would be that big of a difference between actually seeing the, hearing the course live and then listening to the recordings, but it really does seem to make a huge difference. Then we're using the standard WITC grading scale. Um, based on a percentage of total points. Policies, um, hopefully nobody needs to withdraw from the course, but at the 80% mark, which is basically uh, about halfway through our sixth week, so about a week after July 4th, is that 80% mark. Um, you can't drop after that point. Like I said, hopefully nobody needs to drop the class. We'll get, get all you through that's my goal, at least, is to get everybody through the summer. Um, but make sure you're, you're aware of those deadlines. If you drop in the first 10%, which I think is the first two days here, you do get a full refund, but you all have to take the class anyway. Um, the number one reason I get from students for dropping in the summer is because it does feel very fast-paced. Um, we're squeezing a whole semester into eight weeks. And as I was explaining to someone here at Rice Lake earlier, um, about halfway through or two-thirds of the way through class tomorrow, we'll have reached a point where we, we have technically reached the end of what would be the first week of a normal semester. So every week here is a little over two weeks worth of materials. So be, be aware of that. Okay, final grades. Don't really, it's just that percentage again, and those should be posted within a week after class is over. Other college policies, academic integrity, again, don't cheat, don't, you guys know what, what it is to be honest and stuff in class, so we don't need to, to deal with that too much. Um, accommodations, if you have any disabilities or any needs, let me know. Um, I do, I have received notification for a couple of you for private testing and stuff like that. Even if you do not have any sort of diagnosed disability, if 
that makes you nervous sitting in a classroom with other students taking the test, let me know. We'll find a private place for you. Um, the big thing is, it's your job to remind me of that. If you have that accommodation coming, don't be afraid to, to either you know, get, say something to me or send me an email reminding me saying, hey, can you make sure my test gets sent to wherever. For the most part, what I usually do is I just have the test in the far sites. They'll have the test available in the classroom for you on test day. You just come to the classroom, pick it up, and go to the library or wherever it is that you find a, a private room. Um, if you, Like I said, if you are going to need a private room for testing, it's your job to set that up. So go to the library and reserve a room or whatever you need. Um, for the far sites, it's a little more difficult. Here in Rice Lake, I try to stop down at the library halfway through the test and see if you have any questions. The far sites, obviously I can't walk around the building. So you guys have to pop into the into the network here and ask questions over the camera if you, you have anything on the test. But I'm pretty loose about answering questions on the test to make sure you, you know what you're you're looking at. So if you have, like I said, if you have any needs, please talk to me and we'll see what we can do to help you out. My first goal in here is to make you feel comfortable so that we can actually assess what you really know rather than assessing what you can do under heavy stress. And then just a note, like I said, these classes are recorded and they are publicly posted. So anybody can view them, so don't say anything that you don't want the world to know about. I know I shouldn't have to say that, but you'd be amazed that some students spill their guts to me in class about when the recordings are going. And then that's just the units. Our first unit is on whole numbers and basic algebra. Um, second unit's on fractions. I just listed as fractions, but that's fractions with basic algebra applied to fractions. And then de decimals, again, with basic algebra. And then unit four is geometry and statistics. Any questions on class procedures, grading, or anything like that? Okay, and just so those of you at New Richmond and Ashland know, if you have any questions, just speak up. A lot of times with the size of the, the screen here, I have my screen is split into four sections, so I can see all four sites at the same time. So don't have to worry about raising your hand. Just speak up and interrupt me if you have a question or anything you need to ask. Okay, so the next thing I want to address is the class recordings. Now, right now, I just have the my information in the syllabus here on the the uh, course information page. Below that is where the recordings will appear. So let me go to last year's or last semester's pre-algebra class. So this is the pre-algebra class for last semester. If I go to course information, you can see you have my information, the syllabus. Um, during the school year, my schedule is a little more complex, so I actually have that listed separately. But then down here, you can see these are the links to the lecture recordings. Usually, I put 123 stands for January 23rd. I put the date on there as the title for each posting, and then all the recordings are. You can usually click on them and make them work, but generally the safest way to do it is to highlight it. Copy and paste it, yes. And you'll be able to see what you see is what's on my screen with my voice over the top. Okay, so now everybody, we got. Generally, then you can scroll down and it'll have listed, you can see over here, other links to other classes will be listed here. But the easiest way to access to make sure you're getting the, the actual class you want is to link every one of them from Blackboard. They should they will be listed down here in order of how we've gone through the class. Then other things that will be here for you. This isn't our class anymore, but course tools, you'll just have links to email myself, or you should be able to email other students in the class if you want to ask a question of another student. I do encourage you to to make friends with other students in the class and make work groups to work on stuff together. It's always easier, especially in a fast-paced summer class, uh, if you have somebody else that you can ask questions and bounce questions off of before you have to come to me with them. Just because 
sometimes, as I mentioned with the email, there's a delay in me getting back to you. If you have someone that you can just sit next to at the computer lab and both of you work on your homework and go back and forth, so a lot of times that helps. So I do heavily encourage you to work with other students on the homework. Um, yes? For, for my math lab, is there a way that we can, when we're doing our homework assignments on there, that we can print it off and then I'll show, you, I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. Um, you can do it on paper, but you still have to go back and enter. Well, I, I know, but I mean something that we can yep. know, kind of figure out before we actually put it on Sure. <laughs> and then here's your grades. The last, the bottom tab will be my grades. It'll list off all your grades for the semester. Right now for our class, I only have, I think, two assignments entered in the grade book the first homework and the first quiz. So when you go click on my grades, it'll just show those two blank assignments. Okay, my math lab. So my math lab, the website is literally mymathlab.com. It's the easiest way to get into it. When you, for the first time you go in, you'll see register now down here in the right corner. Your student, so you'd click on student. Now here, because I'm using an older version of my web browser, it's giving me this notice that it might be nice if I updated my browser. My math lab uses a lot of pop-ups. I'm going to just continue without updating, but at home you may want to update. Just It'll run a lot smoother if you do. So it'll get you to this page, which is this is just giving you a summary of what you need in order to register for my math lab. First thing is going to be an email. I strongly recommend you use your WITC email address. Every semester I have people that use one of their private email addresses, like a Gmail or Yahoo or whatever, and then they forget what email address they used. So I just, I strongly suggest you use WITC email. Whatever one you use, pick a spot on your notebook or whatever, something you know you're not going to lose. If you have a special notebook for this class, I recommend just on the inside of the front cover or something, write down exactly what the email is that you put in there, because that's going to also be your username. Or you can pick a different username if you want to. But make sure you write that down so you have it. And then you're going to be asked to pick a password as well. Make sure you write that down. That is the biggest problem we have in the first couple of days of class is students who register for my math lab, they do their first homework assignment. You can do that when you register. And then the second day, they come back to log in for the next assignment. And they can't get in. And it's generally because they, they didn't quite remember exactly how they entered their password. So make sure you have that written down. The course ID you're going to need. The course ID is in this introductory announcement that I sent out. It is HOFF. 26561. Um, it should be all small letters, yes. And then you're going to need an access code or a credit card. Um, that's where I said that inside front cover or somewhere in your book, there should be a card that says My Math Lab. You have to scratch off like you're playing a lottery ticket to get to your code. It's kind of a pain because that's like 24 digits long and you have to enter it exactly or it starts you all over. But that'll be what gets you into My Math Lab. So then you'll click OK, go ahead and register, and then it'll take you through the process. First thing you need is... That course ID, which is the HOFF26561. Continue. And then it'll ask you if you have an existing Pearson account, um, if you've used My Math Lab for any other classes you've taken. Um, you wouldn't have probably used it at WITC unless you've taken pre algebra before. Uh, but some of you may have had other Pearson accounts. So you can use your same username and password so you don't have to get a new one for my math lab. Otherwise, you can create a Pearson account, which is what most of you will have to do. So then here's where you'd enter in your email address, what you're going to use for your username. 
I usually suggest it's the easiest just to use your email address as your username. That way you don't have to remember anything extra. And your passwords and all that information. Make sure you set a security question. You do have to accept the licensing agreement. I usually don't click to let them send me offers and stuff like that. The students, you don't really care if they got new products, right? Um, and that's as far as I'm going to go, but then in the next step, it'll ask you for, do you have that code in your book or are you going to use a credit card? If you're, you've borrowed a book from someone else or if you bought a used book, you will have to use a credit card to purchase access for my math lab. Okay, let me get out of here. So then once you have registered, every time you go into my math lab after that, you will just click right here where it says sign in. It'll still give you the warning that your my computer's out of date. That's okay. So then you'll enter your username and your password. And for most of you, you'll only have the one class listed here, which will be pre-algebra summer 2017. So you'll click on that and you will go to the main page for my math lab. A little slow loading, but here is the My Math Lab main page. On the main page, the biggest things you will need, now you can see right here there's a calendar. And my calendar has listed homework one due June 13th at noon. That's tomorrow at noon. Homework two is June, due June 15th. That will be Thursday at noon. Homework three will be next Monday at noon. Notice there are no quizzes listed there yet. This only lists assignments that are open and available to be worked on. All the homework for the whole semester should be out there and available. You could sit down tonight and do the homework for the whole summer if you want to. It's all out there. The quizzes will only turn on at a certain time. For example, the first quiz I think will turn on tomorrow at 8 a.m. And it will be available until tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. So you have all day tomorrow pretty much to complete the first quiz. A little bit more precise way of finding your assignments. On the left side here, you just click on homework. And there is all of the homework assignments for the whole semester. Notice there are, oh, there's a couple missing. There's a couple more at the end there that aren't listed yet. It only lists the first 20 it looks like it has listed, but there are. As you complete them, the other ones will appear on the bottom. So that's all the homework for the semester there. If you click on quizzes and tests, what's listed here are the four unit tests and the final test. Um, that final test is to assess the class, not the student. So don't get nervous about that. Um, that final test serves two purposes. One is, like I said, if we have time on that last day of the semester, it assess, it tells us, did this class do what you needed it to do? Are you walking out of here with better skills than you walked in here? The other thing that that final test accomplishes for me is it keeps that last day of the summer open. So if for any reason we have to go over a topic again or we miss a day for some reason, we've got an extra day at the end of the semester I can cancel the final test and we've got a day to catch up at the end of the semester. So that final test is absolutely nothing to worry about. It cannot hurt your grade. Now all these other ones are listed here but that is not the test. I can click on test one. There's only one question there. That's not the test. All that is is that's a reminder to let you know test one it says in class June 20th. So that's telling you on June 20th there will be a paper and pencil test in class. And that there's stuff listed down here, but this is actually um, practice tests that come with the textbook. So if you want to come down here and practice the material for chapter one, you're welcome to. But this stuff down here is not graded. When a quiz becomes available, it will appear at the top of this list up here. Here, let me just go into my little list of assignments here, and I can tell you exactly. Quiz one will become available at 8 a.m. tomorrow and will be available till 11.59 p.m. tomorrow. 
So if you do the homework tonight, it feels really good, and you want to do the quiz before you start class tomorrow, you can start it at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So you can do it before class. The homework assignments, you can try pretty much as many times as you want to. I think it does actually limit you to, I think, six attempts per question because algorithmically that's all the, the different combinations it will generate. Um, and there's no time limit. You can take from the end of class today until the beginning of class tomorrow to work on the homework if you want to. The quizzes do have a two-hour, actually I think I put it up to a three-hour time limit now for the quizzes. It should never take you that long, but it's just the system requires me to have a time limit on quizzes. You get two attempts on a quiz, and the system does not allow you to leave the quiz and come back to it. So once you start the quiz, you do have to work through it. It really all depends on the group and which quiz it is. I mean, there are some quizzes on here that are only four questions long. There are others that are 25 questions long. Like this first one here tomorrow is a longer one because it's the beginning. That is only 10 questions. I cut that one back a little bit. I must have taken pity on you guys for the summer. Oops, come on. Um, let's take a look at some of the one of the homework assignments here. Let's go into the first homework assignment. Now you see the homework, the quizzes usually you'll start and it'll give you a warning by the way that this is a quiz, not just a homework assignment. You know, click yes, I do <laughs> want to work on it. I want to use one of my attempts to work on it. Um, and it'll just take you through question by question. The homework, you can just start on any question if you want to. So I'm going to click on question 35 here. Hopefully I picked a good one. Not bad. So if I come to one of these homework questions and I don't know what to do, I can click on question help over here and it gives me some options. The first one, now to help me solve this, I'm going to skip Usually the first one I would use would be view an example here. If I click view an example, it'll show me a similar question and it'll go through it step by step how you finish, how you did it. So this is kind of a description of the concept behind that question. Click continue and it might give me the next step. And you can see it goes through step by step. If I close, then I can go back and work on this question. If this question still stumps me, then I would try to help me solve this. What help me solve this does is it takes this exact question and it walks me through it step by step. Now help me solve it's a little bit more interactive than the view and example because it will ask you to enter some information. You know, start with the thousands digit. Can seven be divided by eight? No. So that takes you on to the next step. Now I'll go to the hundreds place in the dividend. Can 79 be divided by 8? Yes. So it'll actually kind of step you through it. Now this is kind of a generic one, but this one's a little better. 79 be divided by 8? Well, let's say 9 times. You can see this little menu that popped up, by the way. If you need to enter fractions or symbols, you'll select them out of this menu. And you can enter them into there. It'll give you the fraction for entering a fraction or whatever. So check my answer, there we go, and it takes me on to the next step, and so on. You'll notice, now that I did the help me solve this, this question changed. Because it, it went through the same question. Well, it's not going to just let me come back here and enter in the answer. It, gave, it changed the numbers. So I still have a shot at doing this, but the numbers are different. If you try the question three times and get it wrong three times, It'll cut you off after three times. Now, this is multiple choice, so hopefully on the third attempt you get it right. Although there is information to answer here. Um, once you have, if you, cause you hit check, once you enter an answer, you hit check answer. Like here, I'm going to put in a wrong one and I'll check answer. It says it's wrong, try again. So now I can try a different one and check answer. 
Once you've tried this three times and got it wrong three times, the third time it'll say final check. It'll say move on to the next question or do a similar question. If you want to keep working on this problem, click similar question. It'll change the problem again and it'll give you three more chances. Now unless they change the system on me, I think that's the only time. Oh, it'll still let you keep doing a similar question again. That was one of the new updates they had proposed is that at the, after the third time they'll give you the right answer, but they'll keep giving you new questions. So it looks like you can keep repeating similar questions until you figure it out. Over here beyond, this, so we've got view an example, we've got help me solve this. Some of the questions have a video, you can go view a video on that concept and help figure it out or an animation. Textbook should always be available, you can click there. It'll actually take you to the page in the textbook that covers that concept. And then finally, ask my instructor. If you're really stumped and you want to ask me about it, you click on ask my instructor. And it'll actually bring up a message here that you can type a little message here as to what's, what's the problem of, you know, I know the answer, but I just don't know how to enter it into the computer or whatever. And it'll send me an email with that question. It's important that if you want to send me an email about a homework question, you use this. Because if you just send me an email saying I had a problem on question number four on the homework, well, as we saw here, the numbers are computer generated. So I can go in and look at question number four, but the question I'm looking at will not be the same question you are looking at. So if you click that Ask My Instructor, it will actually send me a copy of the question you're working on. So if I go through and say, well, first you have to divide seven by whatever, I'm actually telling you the same numbers you're using. So it's not confusing that. So that's the homework. Now the homework does cut you off. I think it cuts you off at noon tomorrow. So you do have some time after lecture tomorrow if you need to go back and finish up the homework. At that point, if you tried to keep working on the homework, it would give you a message saying points will be deducted. Um, don't worry about that. I have to put in a deadline for homework. Um, I'm not going to deduct points for you working on homework past the deadline. My math lab will cut off half your points for it. When I, the official grade book is in Blackboard. When I transfer your homework grades to Blackboard, I am not going by the point value that, that my math lab puts on it. What I am going by is effort. So if I look at your my math lab grade and you got an 80 or 90 percent on homework, I'm putting the full points into Blackboard. If you have a 20 or 30 percent on the homework, then I'm actually going to click on it and look at it. And if you spent 10 minutes on the homework and got 20%, well, then I'll put you know, partial points in the blackboard. If you spent two hours on the homework and that's all you were able to do, you're going to get full credit for that homework. Because you put in the time and the effort, I'm not going to punish you for struggling on the homework. The homework is a learning tool, not a grading tool. So if you're putting in the time and effort on the homework, you will get the points. Now the quizzes, however, there you will be graded for accuracy. So make sure... If you struggled on that homework, you come in tomorrow and you ask me questions. Hey, I was having some problems with it. In your notebook, write down what questions it is you were having problems with so that we can go back through them in class. The quizzes, you get two attempts. None of those helps that I saw you saw up there will be there for a quiz. So you can't view an example or, or anything like that for a quiz. So make sure that when you do the homework, you do really understand it. I have several students that say, well, I breeze through the homework, but I'm stumped on the quizzes. Well, that's because the first thing they do when they get to a question is they click view an example. And it, the, the example shows them how to do it, so they do the question. Well, they get to the quiz, they don't have that, they don't know which process to use. So do your best to try to figure it out without the helps on the homework, because it's not there for the quizzes. Second, you get one attempt per question on the quiz. And you cannot grade it question by question. The homework will tell you that that question's right before you move on to the next question. The quiz will not. You do the whole quiz, and then you submit it, and then it'll take you back through, and you can see which ones you have right or wrong. You do get two attempts, but it's not two attempts per question. It's two attempts per quiz. So your second attempt, you would have to go back and redo the whole quiz. If you do worse on the second attempt, it does not hurt your grade. I automatically take your highest grade. So if you do not, unless you get a perfect score on the quiz, there's no reason not to do the quiz twice. 
So with that said, you get cut off at 11.59 p.m. for the quiz. Make sure you're doing it early enough so that if you need to take it a second time, you have time to take it. Okay, any questions on my math lab? And what we'll do here is at some point we're going to take, actually we'll take our first break now. I'll turn you guys loose. Um, is there anybody that does not know how to log into a WITC computer that hasn't done it yet? Okay, so for those of you at New Richmond and Ashland, I'll have you go ahead and log into the computer. If you need to take a break, if you need to use the restroom or get a drink of water, feel free to go do that. Um, we're going to take about 15 minutes right now. Those of you here, I'll make sure this door is open so you can get next door into the computer lab. Get logged into the computer, one, to make sure you can get access to a WITC computer, and two, try to get yourself logged into my math lab. So we'll start lecturing again at about 10.05 uh, or so.